Uh, good morning, our esteemed uh, members of the media. Good morning, all members of the UNC. My name is Michael Onyamande. I am the Secretary General of the UNC. And I welcome you all to this press conference. Right. The purpose of this uh, press conference is, number one, to formally introduce the party to the nation. Number two, to express our appreciation to all those who have been toiling in the political heat of Zimbabwe's political kitchen. And number three, to call for unity. The name of the party is called the United African National Council and uh, is led by a man who has a PhD in theology. He is a doctor and reverend. He studied in Zimbabwe and the USA. He has five degrees. He has worked in the bishop's office. He has worked as a district superintendent. He has worked in America. He is a professor of theology and is married to a professor. He has four children and five grandchildren. He started politics in 1974, working with, the bishop, with Bishop Ebo Tendikayam Zorewa as Foreign Affairs Secretary. He was called by UNC in 2016, and he was elected by Congress in 2017 to become President of the UNC Party. And so, please, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome the President of the UNC Party, His Excellency Reverend Dr. Gwinyab Zorewa, to give us a press statement. I thank you. very much, Secretary General, Mr. Nyamande. My fellow citizens and friends, Zimbabwe is the only country God gave us. It is the only country which our Liberation War veterans fought and died for. It is the only lasting inheritance and is beautiful. It is no wonder our great foreign heroes like Comrade Herbert Chitepo, Comrade Josiah Tongogara, both of whom died violent deaths, and a host of other freedom fighters, dead and living, gave their lives as a sacrifice for our liberation from colonialism. While no one can really repay these sacrifices, we at least ought to revere, honor, and appreciate their sacrifice by making Zimbabwe worth the sacrifice. Please note, honoring the foreign heroes is not living in the past. Rather, it gives deeper meaning to being a Zimbabwe citizen. More importantly, we are proud to be Zimbabweans when we achieve our national aspirations as peace, national unity, human rights, economic prosperity, fair land redistribution, national development. We surmise that the present political state of affairs is the outcome of their advice to the president since 2019. More serious opposition leaders took exception to Poland. The UNC was one of them. Recently, the Triple C has emerged. It seems to be a reconfiguration of a, a version of the MDC. All in all, we thank all these parties for showing a concern about the condition of our country. Barring its failures, ZANPF is also concerned about the economy. So we are grateful to all for the efforts to make Zimbabwe a better country 
than it currently is. To, ac to accomplish this, we need a nationalist approach to our national politics. Most people concur that the sporadic polit political violence and intimidation, intra-party fighting, political polarization, rampant corruption, nationwide unemployment and poverty are currently threatening our freedom and independence. The serious polarization that exists between the ruling party and the opposition parties adds fuel to the fire. Zimbabweans in the diaspora are also concerned about the instability of our nation. Yes, they had to abscond. Yet, Zimbabwe is home. We are grateful to the diasporians for remitting to their families almost one billion US dollars on the average annually. No doubt, this goes a long way to alleviate our economic crunch. However, finally, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. Luke chapter 12, 48. There must be Bibles in China. Be advised that we are perfectly aware, we are quite aware that foreign, inv uh, foreign investors primary objective is extracting wealth from our country. They don't come here to make us better. They come here to make themselves better. I guess that is human nature. <clears throat> the UNC will empower local businessmen and women who have a sense of nation building. We have heard the president pontificate. Nika inowakwa newe <laughs> that is true. Provided How can we build? How can we build homes? How can we build Zimbabwe when the Zimbabwe currency, the RTGS, is not good for anything? Let us have good money in Zimbabwe. <coughs> we have good minerals. Let us have good money. <coughs> Regarding local empowerment, the Makorokosa will be paid in foreign currency. Do you know that when the Makorokosa goes to fidelity, they are paid in RTGS. But when the foreigners come and pay and buy gold, they buy, they, they pay in the US. I don't know what's wrong. Makorokosa vanu. Makorokosa vana vedu. Makorokosa doa na baba wane vana. Wanu fanila kupatu kwa wo se wanu we Zimbabwe. Sema investors. Se wanu wali serious. Sema businessmen. So I am very firm. I would like to see that Makorokosa get the, the US dollar when they, when they sell their gold to fidelity. They build on each other's successes. The UNC will build on whatever ZANU-PF has done well in the past 43 years. It's very difficult to come up with a good list. Culture Yekuti, culture Yekuti Rajecha, kana political violence, kana rigging election results, kana kuitira utsinye wanu, ngai pere wadikan. After all, the globe is shrinking into one village, and I have become your next door neighbor. We can live together in peace and with respect. Let us unite. <coughs> I have a saying, Chikunwe Chimwe, Achiskwanyi Inda. You guys don't know what lies in anymore. Istakakura Nenda, Tijita the Gukwenya, right? But Chikunwe Chimwe, Achiskwanyi Inda, you can't have two of them. <clears throat> so what that means is that unity is a strength. Unity is a strength. National unity requires giving each other democratic space, tolerating each other, and sharing basic national values. It means parties or individuals are free to express their views 
about governance without being victimized. This, this brings national stability, which we must strive for. To a higher level, creating conditions conducive to a higher standard of living. Zimbabwe will wave bye-bye to hyperinflation when the UANC introduces favorable alternative economic policies. To reiterate, our goal as the alternative government is to excel performance in every aspect of services to the nation. After the first five years, uh, after the first five year term in government, we will not need to campaign because our performance will campaign. <laughs> I am surprised that the sitting government, the current government, is extensively campaigning as if they just came yesterday. Their work must campaign for them. If their work of 43 years is not campaigning for them, who are you fooling? The UANC has always been committed to implement the national ideals of our liberation struggle, which included the fair land redistribution, enfranchisement, human rights, and all other civil liberties. Also, as a participant in the nation's liberation war, the UANC cannot be a project or a puppet of the West or the East. Common sense tells you that a child cannot be older than its mother. This is not claiming entitlement, but merely stating the fact. It's one thing to be friends with other nations, it's another to be a puppet of the West or the East. After 1980, Zimbabwe made lots of friends, but with time we lost many allies due to our prevailing political and economic policies. The ruling, party is banking, the ruling party is banking on the adage, you do not bite the hand that feeds you. So they keep spoon-feeding the poor in order to capture their vote. Fortunately, that secret is open now, and the UAC will introduce a policy for economic empowerment. As an alternative government, our policies will take advantage of any good that the incumbent has done or was trying to do but failed. We will replace their failures with more inclusive, visionary, and progressive development programs. We do not intend to reinvent the wheel, but we make the wheels of agriculture turn and turn faster. The invitation to all progressive people who are committed to real change is let us turn the 70% poverty rate into a high prosperity rate. <laughs> poverty reduction in the urban area. <clears throat> poverty reduction in the urban areas. The UNC policy on poverty reduction in the urban areas revolves around private property ownership guaranteed employment opportunities and causes why over three to four million Zimbabweans left home in the first place. Some left voluntarily, <coughs> others involuntarily. As the new president, if elected, first I would make sure that what drove Zimbabweans out has been redressed. The economy at home, home uh, human rights at home, corruption at home, lack of accountability and transparency at home will all have to be rectified before we can attract our diaspora generation. Sadly, and ironically, the Zimbabweans away from home feel more protected, secure, and have access to greener pastures, good money, the type of money that you can hide under the mattress and 10 years later it will still have its value. The UANC will create socio-economic and political environment at home that will attract the diasporans at home. 
after all, the saying is true. There is no place like home. On a sad note, the diasporans would rather come home on a passenger plane, not as cargo. <coughs> Further, furthermore, <coughs> beyond simply welcoming them home, Mr. President, the UANC will grant all these citizens in the diaspora their right to vote for their national leadership from wherever they are. This is a common practice in many free countries. Our soldiers were allowed to vote from the DRC. After all, present technology allows that. 